Hi, everyone. Quite an honor to, to speak today on the state of tech in Africa. Thanks, Christoph, for an amazing event. And uh, I see some faces in the audience who are just as capable, if not more, than me to talk about the state of Africa, tech in Africa. So, Kiet van Seil, nice to meet all of you. And I'm sure we will have glasses of French champagne or some wine later and get to know each other a bit better. Um, I'm the founder of a VC in, based in Cape Town and Jersey called Knife Capital. We invest in uh, innovation-driven ventures across the continent and opportunistically in the US and in, in Europe. We find good investors and good investments um, through some of our, our initiatives in the ecosystem as well as our accelerator Grindstone. We grow those, uh, make those investments through uh, diligence, valuations, and all those things, which we might or might not touch on over the next couple of days. But then the hard work starts, growing these investments for a reason, in terms of exit-centric business building. It's very important for us to, to realize that strategy towards the end of it all. So if the uh, Corsa and uh, French didn't wake you up, this next slide will. Um, so when we were raising funding for our Series A fund in 2017, a mere five years ago, a US-based investor um, looked at us and said, but tech in Africa is an oxymoron. Um, does it exist? And you know, I was actually quite taken aback um, and in a, in, a, in a fit of rage sat up that night and wrote a blog about um, the, the, the oxymoron of tech, tech or non-oxymoron of tech in Africa. Luckily, I didn't publish it because it was... Um, I, always, I always need to read stuff in the morning if I do something in the heated moment. But um, a lot has changed, and the next couple of slides will show that. And the reason why I was actually quite irritated with this comment is because at that time, in our um, knife capital portfolio, we already have exited a mobile financial services company that grew throughout most of the countries in, in, uh, in, in Africa, FinTech, to Visa. We've already exited the predictive analytics business to General Electric. We already exited one of our grindstone companies um, in radar um, analytics to Garmin. And um, we were setting up for exit a, a business involved in um, food technology, online ordering technology, which we exited the next year to, um, to Uber. All of which are US-based businesses. So, um, so therefore, you know, there's definitely tech in Africa and has been for a very long time. But it is concentrated um, uh, along a few things. So in, in terms of a, a recent report by Google and the IFC, really I, that, that sentence struck home to me, basically saying Africa's internet economy is one of the largest overlooked investment opportunities available. Not so much anymore, if you look at where we are in 21 and 22, but, um, but ultimately whichever metric you use, around growth factors, whether it's how much the digital economy is adding to GDP or, or any growth measures, it basically centers around four key areas. And that is really a rapidly um, expanding population, a rising middle class, young urban citizenry entering the workforce at, at scale, and increased connectivity, which um, specifically helps our technology entrepreneurs because access to technology is um, in many ways leapfrogging a, a few other countries. So if we delve a little bit deeper in terms of the size of Africa, now everyone's seen this slide, but I actually just wanted to remind us just for one second. It is a massive continent. Um, Africa is not one country. I think a lot of people make that mistake, mistake talking about Africa as, a, um, as an ecosystem. It's not an ecosystem, it's a conglomerate of many ecosystems. And in that ecosystem, different languages, different cultures, different legal systems, um, and each country in Africa has something different to offer to the, to the tech community. And we really need to foster the, the comparative advantages that each country has to offer. So the exciting part of where Africa is, is we're lagging a little bit behind, or a lot behind in many, many aspects on global averages. So this is a very recent report by Endeavor, which uh, I would encourage you to download and have a look, um, which basically talks about the comparison between the digital landscape of where Africa finds itself in terms of internet usage, in terms of the digital economy, access to broadband, access to, to connectivity, um, and ultimately concludes that it's expected to grow six times by 2050 uh, in terms of GDP and, and many other metrics. So 
not throwing graphs at you for the sake of throwing, but to illustrate the massive growth opportunity that, that Africa is standing in front of. So it is concentrated largely around um, four main countries in terms of South Africa, Egypt, Kenya, and Nigeria. Between those four countries account for most of the GDP on the continent, accounts for most of the tech developers, most of the large cities of more than a million people, most of the accelerators, a lot concentrated on that. But um, as we'll see later, countries like Senegal, Ghana, Tunisia, um, Rwanda to a degree, definitely up and coming into, in this ecosystem and, um, and, and contributing heavily. So a little bit of crossover in that report around the fundamentals of building this ecosystem, as well as things that have actually accelerated that e this ecosystem. So just general economic growth and prosperity, job creation, and, um, and, and the, 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 the effect that has throughout the ecosystem um, on, on, on the tech startups. Secondly, young, growing, urbanizing population with energy and new ideas and, and, uh, and basically the adoption of technology, increasing digital penetration. COVID has been strangely very good to us as a, as a, as a tech ecosystem because suddenly things like healthcare access and um, education in our own um, knife capital portfolio have really grown exponentially, which it may or may not have done um, if it wasn't for, for the fact that many things went, went online. And the increased tech talent and the access to, to technology is, is, is an accelerator of, um, of the fundamentals. Okay, so then when we, when we look at, at Max and Maxime, keep us, us really informed in, in, in what's going actually on in this ecosystem. Um, so I know it's, it's maybe a bit small, but we're total funding in, in 2019 across the continent were around just over one and a half billion, just under one, two billion in, in 2020, grew quite a lot to 4.4 billion in 2021, and already up to May, and the second half of the year is always quicker, faster, and more than, than the first half. I think we'll have to see what the macroeconomic slowdown um, has, has to say about that. But, you know, already 2.7 billion raised. I think if you ask um, people in the audience like Zach George there, his, his prediction last year was on the money. It was 5 billion. And it depends who you ask because Partech report says 5.2. These guys say 4.4. So let's cut it in the middle to say Zach was li right last year. Let's, let's hope he's right this year. There's a bottle of champagne for it. Um, and that is basically... Nine billion. Um, Christoph and them are, are, are in Africa Arena saying six and a half. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll have to buy champagne anyway because any of those numbers are, are good for us to reach. Um, but there is a lot of activity happening. Oh, sorry, I just need to quickly do a time check here because there's no timer here. Oh, all good. Okay, Catherine, you'll keep me honest. Huh? So then in terms of comparatively... This is maybe a little bit, just be careful of this graph because not to scale. So the US and, and, and other markets, much more money there. But if you look at the growth rates, 150% year on year, quarter to quarter one growth in, um, in the African funding ecosystem. And interesting to note that Asia and the US are, are flatlining over that same period. So, and in Europe and Latin America, it's about 30%, 33%. So on all metrics, growth in investment activity and uh, digital penetration in Africa is on the money. Partech weighed in, basically saying that um, Africa, you know, there has been an increase in VC. In Africa Tech, we grew twice, two times the activity, three times the amount invested um, in many, many rounds. But, but interestingly, they also break the rounds down in terms of what are the average size rounds. Now, there's a lot one can say about stage and Series A and Series B. But around $1.2 million is, a, is an average seed round, 8.8 .8 Series A, 24 Series B, and then it goes into, um, into the hundreds. And that is basically um, you know, what the ecosystem points to towards sta stages of, of funding. Um, Africa Arena, State of Tech in Africa report really sums all of those things up very nicely to, for us in, 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 in four categories. Firstly, country breakdown, as, as we said, Nigeria, clear winner there. Egypt, South Africa, and Kenya attracting um, more than half a billion dollars each. But Senegal has accelerated 2.6 times faster than the rest of the continent. So the growth in Senegal is, uh, is, is, is coming up. 
and, and one to watch. When you look at the sector breakdown, fintech, um, large, specifically when it comes to amount of funding raised, just because um, of the mega deals happening in fintech, so it's, it's maybe a, a bit of an outlier there. But um, the foundational sectors like e-commerce, education, energy, health, logistics, um, I think I see a couple of, of the, the 45 startups today, I think will majority be in, in one of those sectors, and I can see you sitting in the audience there. So a stat to not be proud of is that female-founded startups raised 20% of all funding and 16% of all capital in 20, 2021. But a, a stat to be proud of there is it is growing year on year, firstly, and comparatively, if you look at the US, that number is 2%. So our female founders are definitely doing that thing, and no, we are not there yet, and everyone, at least in the, in, on this continent, needs to, to have this top of mind, because once again, a key differentiator that this continent can offer in terms of uh, tech on the, on, the, on, the, on, in, on the global stage. Investors, yeah, double the amount of investors, investors last year, and um, interestingly, a lot of them are not just coming in doing a, like a toe in the water, one or two deals. A lot of them are coming back to the second deal. Many of them are, are five deals later. So, um, so yeah, there's consistency, investors are, are there, and that fuels the ecosystem. So the opportunity, in, in my mind, is, is fra framed around the fact that there's consistent growth and traction. You know, it's not a flash in the pan, it's a movement, there's traction, there's growth. On the global stage, only 1% of global venture funding um, is going into Africa. So, you know, we will never be the majority, but, you know, if 1% becomes 2%, we've doubled our share of, of, of investment, and the opportunities are certainly, certainly there. Our startups solve meaningful challenges, you know, so Elon Musk famously said once in, on a panel that his kids sitting in America aren't actually going to be as, as great entrepreneurs because of the fact that they don't face as much adversity. Things work. There's no real reason to, to solve those challenges in a different way. So for all the challenges that we have on the continent, um, you know, the digitization of the solutions of those challenges therein lies the opportunity. And then, because of scarcity, we generally build more sustainable businesses over here. Um, there's just not as much money to throw behind runway. Um, entrepreneurs just have to bootstrap more, be more capital efficient. And it's also something that I wish um, for our ecosystem to not lose in terms of how we do it. Okay, so the African ecosystem not going to go through this all, just a snapshot from, uh, from the journalist. Um, don't, don't look for your logo if it's not there and think they've messed it up. Grindstone Accelerator is not there, so, uh, so we can. But at least it gives an idea that there are corporate investors, there are many fu funders, founders, and some, some key logos of businesses. The unicorns are starting to come, and um, there is debate in at least our, our groups on, on the Africa investor groups of is it African if it's a Delaware business? Is it African if, if majority of its clients? So, so let's just adopt them all as African. There's one or two missing based on how you, how you do that definition, but amazing growth and um, billion dollar businesses. Um, it'd be nice to see some billion dollar exits and, um, and not just paper-based value. E-commerce giants, just if you look at Take A Lock and Souk, um, number of monthly visits, 10 million um, visits on their e-commerce marketplaces, three times as much in Jumia. So these are some of the, some of the large e-commerce giants across the continent. And then interestingly, someone on a panel last week said, well, MFS Africa just acquired global technology partners, so are African businesses now, is, it, is this an inflection point of African businesses starting to acquire international businesses? And I was, had to think about that. I said, I don't think it's an inflection point. I think it's just normal. It's just an extension of what, what's, what's happening. Um, a lot of businesses are, are raising a lot, lot amount, large amount of capital. A lot of businesses in general in the world grow through organic growth or grow through acquisition up and down their value chain. So, but still, it was, it was quite nice to see that, uh, that these are also now starting to grab, grab headlines. All right. If we look at some characteristics, 
unreasonably high, high return expectations. Potentially lack of detailed information about the underlying investments. Hype versus substance, you know, consistent validation touch points. Early investors cash in um, early on, and uh, it does require the number of investors, of investors to grow to extend the runway consistently and consistently. So, unfortunately, if you Google those characteristics, or if you Google the characteristics of a pyramid scheme, those are the characteristics. So, let's go through it again. Unreasonably high return expectations. We have to get real about what is actually unrealized returns, what are realized returns, how do we get more exits on the board, how do we give returns back to investors? Because money will always follow money, and we need to deliver the goods as an ecosystem. Lack of detailed information, a lot can be said about some recent high profile um, corporate governance issues around some startups or scale-ups in, in Africa. So increased diligence become important. How do we look at that? What information do we make available to investors? And how do we become slightly more transparent? Hype versus substance. I'm all for hype. Just make sure we, we, we hype the businesses where there are substance. Early investors cashing in. Fantastic for angels to cash out, cash in, reinvest that capital. But we also need to make sure people at the top of that pyramid, the, the funds, also give exits back to their um, LPs because great LPs like FMO, IFC, and others are not going to continue funding the ecosystem unless they see the returns coming out. And that will be the number of investments, their stores growing. Lastly, in an economic downturn where we are now, why am I still positive and excited about this ecosystem? Well, there is a negative impact, impact on the deteriorating um, macroeconomic climate. It will definitely have impact fundraising and valuations. We're already seeing some reports that are some down rounds, up to 30% down on what previous investors have come in uh, at IPO delays. Maybe not that relevant for Africa, but the worse the world does, the, the, the longer the sales cycles for our B2B startups would be, and um, the less white noise or activity there will be in the ecosystem for consolidation and, and, and so forth. So there is a funding squeeze. There's market consolidation. You might see it as a threat or an opportunity. It just depends on, um, on where the life cycle is of, of your business if you're in fintech. But there's capital waiting to deploy it. A lot of money has followed this ecosystem, including our fund and many other VC funds actually have raised these funding, funding and there's dry powder and we need to deploy. So deploying into companies where they can show a path to profitability or a path towards cash flow and sustainability. And one has to see how deep that hole is of burn before one gets through the other side. And that points to capital efficiency. So at the moment, investors really are looking at more favorably on, on businesses who actually can show that the money they have raised, they've deployed in an efficient manner to gain traction, to gain revenue, and to gain clients. And that's me. Um, we do have some time for, for some questions, if there are some. But um, yeah, a hell of an exciting time to be an investor or a startup in Africa. Thank you, Christoph. Thank you.